I think on MLB the show I used to be like in the low eighties for my overall rating. And I could like throw a slider to the location, like do all the inputs and whatever you have to do. And it would like go in the general direction that I aimed. Whereas now, since they made me really shitty, no. and I, it's funny, like when I was preparing, when I was preparing for my twins game, it was actually hilarious because I knew that the sl slider would be an important pitch for me against the twins. And um, I'm practicing and like to certain guys, like, all right, I really want to get the slider to this location. And I would like do the inputs. It'd be good. And then the pitch would come out of my hand on the video game right down the middle, just hanging right down the middle. I'm like, come on, man. Hey, everyone, and welcome to episode number 189 of the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media. And I feel like better days are ahead. At least that's what it says on Lucas Giolito's hat. Who sent you that? Making fun of my style? No, no, I'm appreciating it. How in the world is that making fun of you? No, I, I don't know. I'm, uh, who sent me this? Um, I work with, uh, an awesome woman named Sydney, and she helps me understand what all the kids are into these days when it comes to clothing. Okay. So do you ever wear that into the clubhouse? Yeah, this is one of my favorite hats right now. Hats are tough for me because I have a giant head and it's oddly shaped. So most hats like really look way too small or they look bad, but this one's pretty good. It's got it like that deeper uh, kind of feel to it. Okay, well, let's start with this. You have a giant head because you're a giant person. So I think actually you're pretty, it looks like you're fairly proportional. I could be wrong. What What's your hat size? Well, like seven and a half. Yeah, that's not. I'm seven and a quarter. Yeah, and I'm not. No, yeah. I mean, you're six six, two hundred and. I don't know what you are after all your weight loss program there. You little. <laughs> it wasn't a weight model. loss program. Well, I mean, you said you lost. It's funny, it's funny. Like 20? the media, the media's been pretty funny about it. Like this year, like wow, you're so skinny. Da da da. I'm like, I looked like this two years ago. It's just last year I was bigger, but um, yeah, we're chilling. All right, we are uh we're recording this on a day where you were supposed to play baseball, but the weather gods had other ideas, so you got pushed to a doubleheader tomorrow, which you will pitch the second game. I want to start with this. Like, how do baseball players find out when the um when the game's canceled? Is there um do you guys play telephone? Are you I got a text to let I got a text this morning um or early afternoon and uh we had like the clubhouse was like open from like noon to two thirty, so we go get whatever work in we need to get in and and get out of there. Get ready for tomorrow. So does the manager say, "Okay, I want everybody like that's what we do in Little League. We used to let all the teams know and all the parents know who's responsible for that." Um, it it could be it really could come from anyone. I it's usually a front office person. That will like send a text out or whatever, uh, kind of explaining what's going on, and then, yeah, we go from there. I get disappointed when, uh, like my guardians also got rained out today. Now mm -hmm. that's not that big a deal because I, my son. Well, we didn't get rained out today. You got snowed out. Yeah, we got like temperature and high wind out. <laughs> It was uh God that sucks. Last week, um, so we're on our like first long home stand right now. Last week we got in, uh, we were in Pittsburgh, Minnesota. The weather was really nice in Minnesota. We come in back into town and it was like it felt like it felt like June or July. It was like sunny, 75, 80 degrees. We had an off day. A bunch of us went out on a boat on the lake chilled tried to get a little bit of a tan going we had a great off day and then the we played our weekend series uh against the orioles and like weather was pretty good for all of them and then today just out of nowhere there's snow falling onto the ground 
See, it's crazy. I am. So for me, it's April fifteenth. That is my cutoff day. It always has been. You can be cold. I'm from Cleveland. You work in Chicago. That's that's the date for me emotionally. I have moved on to warmer weather by the time April 15th hits. After that, now I'm mad. Now I'm mad. Yeah. I wasn't I don't love the cold weather. I well, I hate it personally. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. This at first I was like, wow, this is the nicest April I've ever had as a white sock. And then we just kind of took a crazy turn here. I think it's only going to be like this for like a few days. And then we go back to like the sunny in 75. So I don't know yeah. what's going on. Well, be careful. That's how people get sick. The the fluctuating temperatures, mm. your body doesn't know how to handle it. You don't dress appropriately. So this is just the dad in me. Yeah. Clean it up a little bit. That's all. Just make sure we're good. All right. I wore a sweatshirt to the field today. Um, I don't want you to give away the details, but you before we came on here, you showed me a little bit of your homework that you're doing for the Phillies. What sort of stuff are you looking at? Um, yeah, so it's like I get uh, I get a bunch of information from our team, right? Like we have an analytics department, and they'll um, send us all sorts of info. And then I like to kind of go through it. And my way of like learning it is by like doing active work. So instead of just like looking at the sheet over and over again and trying to like memorize, that doesn't work for me. It will just go right out of my head or I won't pay attention while I'm reading it. You know, like when you're reading a book and it's not that interesting, you're just like looking at the words on the page instead of actually reading it. So for me, I'll like take the information and then I'll like go on my computer, uh, watch video, uh, go on to certain websites that have a lot of like advanced type of like scouting stuff and start like working through and I'll create my own little notes for each batter I'm expecting to face um, kind of, you know, how do my strengths work against his strengths or my strengths against his weaknesses? Like, you know, where's a good place to throw a slider? stuff like that and kind of put it all together. And then I still do my, um, we, I think we've talked about it before. I do my like video game thing with MLB the show. So I can really like kind of commit that stuff to memory and like practice uh, prior to pitching practice, like my sequences and you know, Oh, I'm in this situation. You know, what are the pitches that I feel very confident to get this guy out, get out of this situation? Uh, yeah. Just putting that work in. So will you play MLB The Show tonight against the Phillies as you? Mm-hmm. That is amazing. That really is crazy. That's so yeah, cool. But so, the pro- right, so the thing is with MLB The Show is uh, I had a down year last year, so they made me like a 70 overall. So it's like way harder to pitch with myself than it used to be. Like back when I was like, I think, I think, on MLB The Show, I used to be like in the low 80s for my overall rating. And I could like throw a slider to the location, like do all the inputs and whatever you have to do. And it would like go in the general direction that I aimed. Whereas now, since they made me really shitty. No. And I, it's funny, like when I was preparing, when I was preparing for my twins game, it was actually hilarious because... I knew that the sl- slider would be an important pitch for me against the twins and um, I'm practicing and like to certain guys, like, all right, I really want to get the slider to this location. And I would like do the inputs. It'd be good. And then the pitch would come out of my hand on the video game, right down the middle, just hanging right down the middle. I'm like, <laughs> come on, man. Like that's not, you know, I know that hangers happen, but like, I really like, it was like a hundred percent accuracy, this, that, <laughs> and then boom, right down the middle, like whoever hit it for a double, I'm like, all right, well, time to deal with that situation. So my scouting with myself in the video game is going to be a little bit more difficult this year, uh, just because my character isn't as good. Got to really focus. Huh? Does that piss you off that you're not as good in the game? No, I mean, it's just how I think this is how it works. 
like I didn't pitch well last year. I had bad numbers. So it's going to be reflected on the, um, on the, the, the new year's video game. Uh, if I start pitching well, then maybe the stats go up a little bit with like the live updates they do. So when um, you actually pitched your best game of the year against the twins, uh, pitched really well in six innings. I think he gave up maybe one run, but really it looked like you had your some stuff working here. So when you throw the slider the way you want to in real life, are you talking like marching around the mound? Like take that, you fucking video game. No, I don't think about it when I'm pitching. I wish I could. I wish I could say that I did, but no. When when I'm out there and I'm like actually competing, um, all the scouting report stuff like that is just that's just kind of there. Uh, once you get into a good rhythm, you're working well with your catcher, all that kind of stuff. Like you see, you you kind of have that feel for the game. That's where I like to get at. Where it's like boom, boom, boom. We're working quickly. Um, we're sequencing up without even really having to think about it, but it's just for like those certain situations where it's like, all right, um, I know that like this pitch is, is going to give me the best chance of success. You know what I mean? Um, and so it's just like having that kind of knowledge there is important. I think. Today's episode of the Chris Rose Rotation is sponsored by these guys, Shady Rays. I want you to take on the sun with gear that is built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered with premium polarized shades at a very affordable price. In fact, Shady Rays offers a world-class product just as good as any expensive pair that you've ever worn out there. And guess what? They're putting money back in your pocket. That's not all. Shady Rays has the most insane protection in the history of eyewear. Every pair of these bad boys is backed by lost and broken replacements. So what does that mean? If I snap these things in half, if I sit on them in my car, if I lose them when I'm swimming my mile-long swim in the ocean, they're going to replace them. And they're not going to say, Rose, what the hell is the matter with you? They're going to say, what's your address again? Because you've done this before. We want you to wear another pair of Shady Rays. So if you lose them, if you break them, even on day one of ownership, they're going to send you a replacement pair, no questions asked. And exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving off the best deal of the season. I want you to head on over to ShadyRays.com. Use the code word ROSE. You're going to get, listen up here, 50% off two-plus pair of polarized sunglasses. Do you hear me, people? 50% off two-plus pair of polarized sunglasses when you use the code word ROSE at ShadyRays.com. Once again, when you break them, when you lose them, they're going to replace them. My God, people! Listen to the rest of the episode, then order up. You're welcome. You're going to pitch the back end now of a doubleheader on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, it's not a day-night. It is a traditional doubleheader. Play the first game, half-hour break, then we play the second game. What time do you show up to the yard? Are you allowed to show up to school late? Yeah. Yeah. It's like if the first game's at like three and the second game is probably going to be around six, six thirty, whatever. Um, yeah, I'll probably get there like probably like two, like an hour before the first game. And what do you do as the starting pitcher for game two? Do you hang out in the dugout? Do you watch on tv how do you best prepare um i'll probably spend a little bit of time in the dugout and then uh once we're getting later into the game and it's kind of now we're creeping into that time where like i need to start doing my stuff then i'll just go inside and start doing my stuff which is what what is your stuff do you get a do you get your arm worked i don't even know what you do what do you do i do a good amount um i wouldn't say crazy i wouldn't you know, I've, I've known some guys I've been in the rotation with that will do like a full blown workout before they go out and pitch um, with like lifting weights and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, for me, I like to, oh man, my like entire routine is pretty much uh, first thing I do is I get um, I get my knee worked out, worked on, I get my back worked on, everything loosened up in that sense. Then I'll get uh, my lower body stretched out manually. And then um, after that, I'll go and get my um, 
I'll get my arm worked on, uh, just getting it all stretched out, loosened up, ready to go. And then I'll go into the weight room. I'll do a bunch of like activation exercises. Um, and then from there, I, I go outside and do a little bit of stretching outside, throw, bullpen, game. Um, I do stuff before that too, but that's not, not like physical activity, more like, you know, going over scouting report and meditation and stuff like that. It's pretty simple. Where's you got it. So, but where, where's your head when, cause there is always a wide range of starting pitcher, uh, mentalities. Mm. There are guys who would walk into the clubhouse headphones on. You couldn't talk to them. Yeah. I don't care whether you were media or a teammate, you just couldn't. I mm -hmm. think that has lessened a little bit over the years, but what if I were to walk into the uh, White Sox clubhouse tomorrow? When would you not talk to me? I'd talk to you whenever. You you'd be you wouldn't be like, hey, I got to go focus now. I'll see you later. Um, not necessarily. I like, I've I've I'm not really like headphones on like it i'm i like to be more just like chilling do, doing whatever uh um, you know those guys you've seen them oh yeah yeah for sure for sure um i'd say that i mean the, the top guy that i know that that is that was scherzer like he gets it's like when the headphones on it's over like don't talk to the guy anymore um but no, I'm I'm I wouldn't say that I like get into that type of mentality until like about to run out onto the field. Got it. Okay. Yeah. I've always felt I've always felt best when I'm just like being myself. Uh and I'm not like trying to like for me, like doing that kind of stuff. Um, at least for me personally, I'm not speaking for other guys because every, everyone's different and there's things that work for everybody. For me, I've like tried that before where I try to be like really intense, like the whole day, not necessarily the whole day, but it's like, as soon as I get to the field, it's like, I don't, I'm not talking to anybody. I have headphones on and it like, to me, like gets me like a little too tense. Like Hell I'm yeah. feeling what i was agreeing with you i said hell yeah i get it, it yeah it just like makes me feel a little bit too tense um and it's almost as if like i'm putting like heaps of pressure on myself when i when when i feel like i'm at my best i'm i'm more like chill throughout the day um and i'm like feeling confident because the preparation i've done leading up to the start I can rely on that and I'm just looking forward to going out and having fun. And then okay. the kind of the, you get the competitive juices flowing once you actually get out on the field and you're like playing catch, you've got your bullpen, you know, they're playing your song. If you're at home and you're walking in, that's, that's when it starts to like get going for me. All right, guys, I'm here to help you. Mother's day is right around the corner. You're probably sitting there saying, I don't have any idea what I'm going to get the lady in my life, whether it's mom or that's someone special or whatever. A light bulb has gone off in my head because Lightbox is here to help. It is Lightbox lab-grown diamonds. Let them do all the heavy lifting because Lightbox makes lab-grown diamonds that you will love with pricing that you will certainly understand. From sparkly studs to brilliant necklaces, these gems will make her jaw drop like that. Whether it's for mom, or for your spouse, getting her a stunning stone from Lightbox Lab Grown Diamonds is a guaranteed W. So this year, forget all the other stuff. Become the MVP of Mother's Day with the gift that you will never forget. And I want to save you some money, too. Use the promo code CHRISROSE10. I say CHRISROSE10. Why is that? Because you're getting 10% off of your purchase. So shop Lightbox Lab Grown Diamonds. Use the code CHRISROSE10 for 10% off your purchase. Believe me, she is going to love it. At what point of your baseball career did you have the most fun? Mm. 
I'd say all the times, uh, I'd say, man, it's tough. It's tough. The most fun, maybe um, low way, uh, 2014. It was on the Hagerstown I'm Suns. talking about your entire, like, little league, uh, high school ball, uh, everything. Yeah, I... I enjoyed baseball. I mean, I always loved it and I love competing. Um, but I don't think I loved competing as much uh, as a kid as I do as an adult. So I'd say like senior year of high school before I hurt myself, it was like a really exciting time because I f it was like the most probably like just such a it, it was like such a high level of confidence like I was throwing really hard and you know I was seeing my name mentioned and all the like top 10 whatever like high school pitching prospects and it was like man like this can be a fun season and then it like all went away like that when I blew my elbow out um it's man that's a really good question that's a really good question I'd say some of the most fun I've had um, is at the big league level when uh, I've been, I'm on like that good, good streak, winning a lot of games and pitching deep into a lot of games. And like, you're in that mode where like, it feels pretty easy. Like you just go out and you're expecting to go throw seven innings and strike out 10 and then it happens. And then you go out the next week and it happens again. It's like me, you're just in that groove. Um, but like some of the most fun I had was the team I was on in low A in 2014. We were like really, really close. Uh, that's the one thing I always tell guys in the minor leagues is I hope that you foster like a fun environment in your clubhouse. Um, and you guys get like close because like you're going through the shit together the in the minor leagues. It's, Thank God it's better for them now, higher pay and better housing and all sorts of stuff that, you know, they unionized. So that's really wonderful news. But like, you know, 2013, 2014, 2015, when I was there, um, obviously I was uh, privileged and fortunate that I was first round pick and I had some money to rely on. But like, you know, your 12 hour bus rides, the air conditioning's not working and you're staying in like, motels where the door opens up to the parking lot and all that kind of stuff and um the team i was on in hagerstown 2014 like we were extremely close we had a lot of fun together and we were really good too we won a lot um so yeah that was that was a really good time that was a really good time i actually when we were in houston we opened up in houston um i went and got uh I went and got dinner after one of our games with uh, Craig Manuel, who uh, was one of our backup catchers. Um, yeah, still talk to a bunch of those guys. Anybody make it from those teams? Uh, Nick Pavetta. Oh. Uh, Austin Voth. Sure. Um, Ronaldo Lopez, obviously. <laughs> My teammate, um, Wander Suero, um, man, Phillips Valdez, been in the big leagues. Um, man, I hope, wonder if I'm missing anybody. Um, Spencer Keyboom, he made it up to the big leagues for a little bit. Sure he did. Yeah, he um, was supposed to be a big one. Um, or that was Carter, maybe. Carter's his little brother. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's still with the Nationals. Um, yeah. Man. Yeah, it was uh, – uh, we had a talented group. We had a talented group. We had some – we had some, like – we had some older guys, too, like senior sign uh, type of players that, like, really contributed. And it's just unfortunate that those guys, um, even though they'll put up big-time numbers, like, the way that the business of baseball works is – They'd have to hit, I mean, they'd have to hit like 500 
to right. be able to like be like, hey, I could be a big leaguer. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So, yeah, good times. The uh, we just took our youngest son on a college tour and drove all around the Midwest. We went to uh, we landed in Chicago, went up to Madison. Mm -hmm. I've never been to the University of Wisconsin. The place is awesome. You ever yeah. been up there? No. Oh no. I heard it's it's pretty pretty uh gorgeous though. Yeah, it's great. And then went drove down to Bloomington. That was six hours to Bloomington, Indiana. Loved Indiana. Drove to Ohio State. Saw that as well. And that was the most driving like I've done in three consecutive days. I'm a flyer. I'm not a driver. Yeah. I can't handle it. Bad back. Get grumpy behind the wheel the whole bit. I can't imagine being on a 12 hour bus ride. I would want to scratch my eyes out. Yeah, that was, um, it was, yeah, it, it's, it's, that's, that's why it's important to have that camaraderie, right? Like we would do so many things to pass the time. Obviously drinking is one of them, but another one, more PG rated stuff too. Like we'd play cards. Um, we would play like games like mafia and stuff like that. Um, and I remember like when among us came out and like everyone was freaking out about that over like the pandemic and it was like taking over YouTube and all this stuff. And I'm like, this is literally just mafia with, but like on a computer. And Funny. I never, I didn't get into Among Us because I had too many good times playing Mafia with my teammates on the bus, <laughs> seeing who could be the best liar. Um, you, I imagine that you could have put away, are you a beer drinker? Yeah. Okay. You could probably put away a few on a bus ride. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we, yeah, that's pretty much what we drank. Get like a 30 rack or a few 30 racks, depending on the length of the trip. Um, yeah. Man, I'm not talking about Wade Boggs type beer drinking ability. Which oh, is yeah. Legendary in baseball. But yeah. I mean, you could probably do pretty, you could probably hold your own. Yeah, pretty, pretty all right. I'm not, I'm not the best at chugging it though. No, me neither. Some guys just like they open it up. See ya. I know. Those are the guys you got to worry about. Yeah. These guys who finish in like two or three gulps. Mm -hmm. Over. Woo. That's rough. Hey, you Rose Rotationers. The baseball season is in full swing. And whether you're rooting for the home team or betting on your favorite player, DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the Major League Baseball, has got you covered for all things this season. Right now, new customers can place a $5 pregame money line bet and get $150 in bonus bets if your team wins. Plus, everyone can hit it out of the park with DraftKings stepped up same game parlays. Boost your winnings with uh, each leg you add up to 100%. I mean, you got Orioles and Red Sox this week. You got Astros at Rays. A lot of good games to, to bet on and to same game parlay, baby. Join the big league action now and DraftKings Sportsbook and download the app and sign up with code ROSE and new customers can bet just $5 on any pregame money line and get $150 in, in bonus bets if their team wins. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with promo code ROSE. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER in Massachusetts. Call 800-327-5050 or visit gamblinghelplinema.org in New York. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Kansas, call 1-800-522-4700. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, 21 plus in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details and state-specific responses gambling resources now back to the show there's a few things i want to hit you on outside of the white Sox realm um i don't know how much you followed the javier baez benching story uh, i didn't Toronto see anything Lock. about it no yeah well, so i'll just give you the synopsis and I, I, this isn't to talk about hobby this is to talk about what goes on in the clubhouse and mm -hmm. how managers handle situations the Tigers had had a few days up in Toronto where they hadn't run the bases exceptionally well, and there were some mental errors and things like that. Javi got a hold of one. He thought it was leaving. It didn't. 
He had to sprint to second for a double. Then he kind of lost track of how many outs there were, in part because he was hitting sixth in the lineup, which is a little lower than they normally hit him. And he thought there were two outs. There was one out. He gets double off of second. That's what happened. A.J. Hinch immediately takes him down on the tunnel, pulls him from the game, out of sight. We don't, but we know that Javi's done for the day. And Javi didn't have a problem with it. He understood it. He did say, I don't make any excuses, but, you know, if I'm hitting home runs in seven straight games, that probably doesn't happen to me. How important is it for a manager to hold everybody, one through 26, accountable the same way? Like, if he doesn't, if A.J. Hinch just lets that fly, do guys get pissed off in a clubhouse? Uh, yes. It's it's hugely important to hold everyone accountable. Now, here, th- this is something um, that I've heard. I'm not gonna like. I'm not gonna quote people. I'm not gonna like throw any qu- names out there in case it's more. Of, but just one thing I've heard that's that really was interesting to me was, um. Everyone, like, ah, everyone in a clubhouse deserves respect from each other, from the coaching staff, from everybody, but not everyone's equal. And that means we're talking service time, you know, veteran status. There's certain things that, you know, if you're a 10, 12 year big leaguer, you are entitled to over a rookie, right? I mean, it's just how it is. But when you step between the white lines, it's important that everybody give their 100% effort, attention, focus. Um, and if you're not, then part of the manager's job is, uh, you know, sometimes pulling a player, you know, maybe, you know, talking to them about what, whatever's going on, holding them accountable. Uh, as well as the other players can do that too, you know, but sometimes it's hard for like a, a rookie or a second year guy, pre-arb guy to like go and tell a dude on a $200 million contract, Hey, like, come on, man, pick it up. I need you to run those balls out. Like know how many outs there are. Could That could be a little awkward, right? So uh-huh. That's part of the coaching staff's job, especially the manager. And yeah, I agree. It's everybody like, you know, everyone should be respected. Not everyone's equal. But as soon as you step on the field, everyone's equal. You know what I mean? I do. So I do. I understand it. Yeah. And, you know, to Javi's credit, he did say that, yeah, he's the manager and, and I get it. I'm going to, Go by his word. He he didn't press him on it and all that sort of stuff. So mm-hmm. uh, it takes me to an interesting question, and I debated whether or not I should bring this up. It's high school baseball out here in L.A. A team which has not made the postseason in well over a decade has a chance to. And because of the rain, they had a few postponements. They rescheduled a game, and it happened to coincide with Coachella, which is the largest, you know this well, the largest music festival we've got out here in the Western United States. Yeah, I know what Coachella is. Yep, okay. But I, I never got to go. I haven't understand. I never yeah, got to go. Because you were busy. Because I played right? baseball. Okay. These seniors who are who have helped build this program up from nothing to a chance to have the playoffs had bought tickets for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And why, so, question, to, why are baseball players buying tickets to Coachella? Because they're seniors and they you can never go. go. Party it up. You can never go. Well, they, they did. At the time they bought them, there was no game scheduled. But because of postponements, they had to reschedule a game on the Friday. So they decided to go. Okay? Decided to go where? To Coachella and miss the game. A playoff game? a shot at a playoff game, regular season game, but a, a big one to help a team get into the playoffs. Are they like, do are they just like seniors on the varsity team kind of riding the bench or are they like legit? Like we need these guys. 
captains. Yeah, get the fuck out of here. That's terrible. That's terrible. You what sell you them. You can you're... resell them. You right. resell that. You resell them and go to Coachella next year when you're not playing college ball. What do you do if you're the manager of the team? Um, you got to play the guys that are showing up to play and care, huh? But but you still have the rest of the regular season and possibly the playoffs. What do you do with the kids that miss the game? Oof. How, where are we at in the regular season? I'm so confused. Like there's, how many games? There's two weeks. To, there's like five games to go, but they they ended up winning the game that these kids missed, and it gives them a leg up for the playoffs. It hasn't been solidified, but they ended up yeah. winning a game without these kids being there, Ooh. and it really helped their chances. What a moral dilemma, huh? Because these kids are these, these, to you. these kids are coming back from Coachella, you know, they just were partying, whatever. And now you have some games left, trying to make it to the playoffs. They're your best players, but and good kids, by the way. I want to put this out there: great kids, great kids. I'm not. Here's the thing: I'm not. I'm not um, commenting on their character, mm -hmm. but. As far as like, you know, when you sign up to be on a team, like commit to the team, like don't show up if you don't, if it's not a priority to you, that's how, that's how I was like raised around baseball. That's like what I learned. Uh, you, if you like commit to something, then do it. We're all in agreement on this part. Now the question is, this reminds continues. me, this reminds me, Santa Monica Little League. Uh, I'm, I was on the all-star team, right? And unfortunately, Santa Monica Little League did it such an annoying way where there were two, all the, it was a relatively big Little League and there are two all-star teams. And instead of right. making an A team and B team, oh, no. they were they like still... equally kind of good. Oh, that's horrible. I know. And so... Um, Santa Monica Little League never really had much luck making it past the district yeah. and sectionals and all that because you're working with two teams and instead of putting all the good kids on one of them it was like um, you know you had some good kids here some good kids here and it was like uh, but I was on the it was based on the division you played in um, not like division as far as uh, skill level but like we did like an east and west right yeah. And so I was on, I don't know if I was on the East or I think the West team. And we had a nasty squad. So nasty, like really, really good. We won the district tournament. It was like the first time Santa Monica had won the district tournament in a long time. We beat, you know, some, we had to beat like Venice and some good little leagues. And then we go to sectionals and we had a kid on our team I was I wasn't even close to the best player, like not even close. Um, I hit a big home run in the in the district, yeah. but other than that, I wasn't really doing much. We had a few really really good players, and one of them, as soon as we made it to sectionals and like the tournament was continuing, bounced. He wanted to go to summer camp. Never, and we okay. lost in sectionals. We're mi we're missing one of our best players. Lost in sectionals. I'll never forgive him. I don't know him. Like I don't even remember his name. But if I were to see him, I'd be like, I don't forgive you for that, because you committed to play for this team. We wanted to go to the Little League World Series, and you left. You dipped out because you wanted to go to summer camp. By the way, th those are twelve-year-olds you're talking about whose parents probably had some influence in the decision. Yeah. Then. Okay. They're screw the parents. But I'm just saying is that, yes, there are similar tracks about what I don't know. Discussing. Maybe I'm like a little too, maybe I'm a little too like angry about this, but like it just brought that up in my head and I'm like Sorry. a very competitive guy. If you're going to be on a team, be on the team, like be on the team. Coachella's every year. 
Coachella is literally every single year. Go your freshman year of college. Go your sophomore year of college. Go your junior year of college. Like, I've never been to Coachella. I've always wanted to go because I love music and I love live music. You know when I'm going to get to go to Coachella? When I'm like 40 years old when my career's over. That's when I will have my first April free, you know? <laughs> and I might be a little too old to go to Coachella then. <laughs> I no, might not want to go anymore. <laughs> not in LA, dude. In LA, you know, anything flies. Um, I guess that's true. But yeah, so those you are, kids, you are... I mean, it's, it's, to me, it's a shame, man. I, what does the coach do? I don't know. It's a tough spot. You, you got to play the best players, right? For best chance to win. But it's like, okay, hold on. Hold on. The coaching staff has said since day one, yes, we want to be the most competitive team we can be. But part of our job, we have failed if we don't teach kids how to get ready for college and life beyond playing baseball. That's what they've said. They're great guys. Of course. Great guys who have, who have revamped the program in recent years. Done an amazing job. This is one of the rare teaching moments you have. I mean, it's it's set up on a tee for you right here. Don't you say, because if not, this program's going to be there long after these kids graduate and go on to successful college runs and whatever careers they have. But, man, you are setting yourself up for something because what's going to happen when little Johnny next year wants to go to Coachella and we're in a different spot and we have a better team and then, oh, by the way, uh, this guy wants to go to this and that guy wants to do this and – do we have to check everybody's social calendar before we plan everything? I mean, this it's you're going down a slippery slope. Don't you yeah. have to say, hey, cheer your teammates on. I want you in full uniform. You'll be part of the team, but you're going to hang out in the dugout with us today. Yeah. I like your take on it. I mean, it's it, – yeah, I mean, these are like – these are kids. These are young men, right? They got – there's a lot to learn. I just – it's a good, it's a good, you know, got to maybe use, use them as an example. I just, it, to me, it like blows my mind. If you're a senior, you're a team leader, you're a team leader. It's your senior year. It's the last, your last baseball season in high school and your team's good. You have a chance of making the playoffs for the first time. Like when Coachella rolls around, how are you not like, all right, let me sell. I'll resell these, and I we got games to play, man. Like Coachella will be back next year, or the year after, the year after that, whenever you want. <laughs> or go to oh. Stagecoach later. That's the country, the country Coachella. <laughs> right. It's uh, it's really interesting. I will be very curious to see how it it plays out in the future. And I want to say this once again: great kids. Good, good dudes. I don't look at them any differently because of the decision that they made. But the thing is that I've taught our two sons, whether it's right or wrong, every decision you make has repercussions, good and bad. And all you can control is how you make your decisions. And if you make a decision and then you don't like what somebody else says in response, out of your hands now. Like, I don't know. Those kids might not play another. They might not get another at bat in their career. I don't know. I think, yeah, it, it's, it just says it's priorities. It like says, it's like, what, what are priorities to you? You know what I mean? And for me, like, I don't know. It was like taught to me, Hey, if I committed to something being part mm -hmm. of a team or, you know, if, I'm trying to go back to like high school, right? Like, oh, I committed, uh, I got a bad grade on a test and the teacher's like, hey, I want you to meet with me once a week. Like, all right, I will do that. You know what I mean? It's like, stay true to that. Well, it, let me it, ask you this, because you went to one of the most competitive high schools academically and baseball-wise mm -hmm. in the country in Harvard-Westlake. Everybody knows the story. If If a coach had heard this out of, if you and Freed had wanted to dip out and go to Coachella, how would that have played? It's in, it's not within the realm of reality. It it's it was like just a it was just 
assumed like, oh, you're on the Harvard Westlake baseball team. You're not going to Coachella. Like, it's not happening. What if, what if your playoff, uh, what if your playoff run, because you don't know the playoff dates until we get to the postseason, not like the regular season. What if it coincided with senior prom? You can't go to prom if you have a game, or you go you if it's like it's a day game, you go to prom after. You know what I mean? But what if it was a night game and it coincided? I'm I'm being honest here. What what would have happened? Would you guys have all said, "Well, you have win our own that, prom, you win that, others? you win that game, and then you go hit the after party." <laughs> <laughs> That's where all the fun is at prom, anyways. <laughs> no one cares about the actual prom. It's all about the after parties. <laughs> you didn't host the after party. No, absolutely not. Who who did? You want to give him a shout out? Uh, I don't remember, man. That was years ago. Who hosted the not after parties? I don't remember. It's like you're not some, even thirty yet. It was some mansion in Bel Air. I don't even know whose house it was. <laughs> <laughs> Harvard Westlake kid whose dad's an investment banker. I don't know. I know, right? <laughs> God Almighty. Um. You guys uh, had an interesting series in Pittsburgh recently. It was really unfortunate because of the O'Neill Cruz injury and the late slide. Nobody mm. could really figure out what was going. That happened with your buddy, Sebi Savala. Yeah. He doesn't still live with you, does he? No, no, no. He's uh, he's down that way about one mile. Okay. All Different right. Different building, yeah. So when a when a fight happens, we're uh, – where are you what are you looking to do anything so that one in particular i'm kind of embarrassed about i was inside the clubhouse taking a piss <laughs> of course you are i zip hey. up i zip up my fly i walk out i look up at the tv i'm like oh fuck and go running as fast as i can out the clubhouse door down the steps up up the up the uh, dugout and out onto the field. Um, and it was already kind of like starting to like slow down a little bit. And I was like, oh my God, it's like the worst look. <laughs> the worst look. That's almost a finable offense, by the way. In no, it report. is a finable offense. It is. It is. Did you get so, fined? Huh? Did you get fined for it? No. Oh. I did not. I did not. Did you I got away with it? Did you... Did you at least zip up the whole way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. I don't yeah, know. Maybe it's... not. It doesn't matter. The really tension bad. wasn't on me there. But Did you have to run it because Sebi's one of your guys, isn't he? Of course. I'm telling you, by the time I got out there, it was already kind of it was already kind of starting to slow down a little bit. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't really know like. You know, O'Neill Cruz, he had a really late slide and, you know, Sebi tagged him and had some words for him. Like the G rated version is like, what are you doing? Like, why would you slide like that? But, you know, a little, that was a nice way of saying it. And he didn't know O'Neill Cruz like broke his, what did he broke? No, he break, of course he didn't. Break his leg his or ankle. something or? Yeah, he fractured his ankle. Fractured his ankle. So he wasn't, he didn't know about that. He was intense in the moment. And then I think like the next batter that was coming up had something to say. And Michael, you don't want to mess with that guy, Michael Kopech, ever. I would not mess with that guy. He's Why? coming. He's going to defend Sebi, his catcher. And, uh, you know, just kind of got a little chippy there for a little while. But then it calmed down. Why don't you want to mess with Michael Kopeck? Is he a what, what's the deal? Um, cause he's got he's got he's he's a got that fire in him, man. That like deep Texas, like uh, he'll go he'll go crazy on you. Oh yeah, there he is, a little. Oh yeah, a little barky. Yeah. Okay, I see it. He's, he probably has like the crazy eye working when it's mm -hmm. uh. When he gets a little bit hot tempered, oh, yeah. yeah, I can see that. All right, it's interesting, interesting. All right, man. Um, I'm gonna let you get back to your prep work for the Phillies here. 
Appreciate you. Here. No, I appreciate you. It was fun catching up. Keep uh, keep throwing that ball over the plate. Yep. Or on the outskirts of it. You know, whatever works best for you. Yeah. We'll get that 70 rating up in no time on MLB. <laughs> so, next time I see you, you'll be like an 82. Yeah, we'll I see. Smell it. <laughs> I was going to see it. Um, all right, man. Tell everybody I say hi in there. Oh, by the way, did you at least get a chance to say hi to Jose Abreu that first series? Yeah. I got a chance to say hi to him, and then the next day I got to face him. It was awesome. Was it weird when he stepped into the box? Yeah, it was a little – it was like a little weird. I mean, he was my teammate for so long and he was like such a huge part of the White Sox and just like our heart and everything. Um, but at the same time, I can tell he's he's uh, he's happy over there. And that's what's most important to me. I just want guys that I've played with to enjoy life, enjoy their career. And so, yeah. You got what? the videos up. Oh, yeah. You got them. Got, got him, him a few times. Did you get them twice? Oh, 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 oh. that away. Yeah. Three Check at bar. bats. It was fun. Nice work. I'm sure it was. Not as much fun for him. Yeah. All right. I, You'll see. I got somewhere. the. I got the. I got the better of him that day, but you know, he's a good hitter, man. You never know what could happen. Yeah, he's fine. He's good. All right, dude. Good catching up. Like I said, tell everybody there I say hello, and uh, we'll talk to you over the next month at some point. All right, Sounds brother. That's good. Thank you, Chris. For for our one of a kind producer, Robbie Shiraco, and Lucas Giolito, who, according to him, there are better days ahead. I am Chris Rose. We'll see you next time in the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media.